This week on Sport Fishing, we'll be fishing aboard the Ranger 85. Departing out of Oxnard, California, we'll be heading up to the Channel Islands looking for rockfish and lingcod. Yeah. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Welcome aboard the Ranger 85. My name is Ricky. Out on deck, I've got Robert, Chris, and Alan. First thing on my agenda tonight, let you guys know where our safety equipment is. Starting off with our life raft, right here in the standard room. There are fish in the ocean. They don't really bite to the center. I wouldn't either. Let's chuckle ahead. Stay morning. Hey, this is my first one. Maybe it'll get bigger. Oh, it will. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bigger one. All right. It's the way to start the day anyway. Hi, I'm Dan Hernandez. I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. But today we're back aboard the Ranger 85. And what we're doing right now is we're bottom fishing. Right now we're fishing between San Miguel and Santa Rosa Island. I'm going to start off fishing with the jig today. See if I can catch me some fish. And what we expect to get is a bunch of rockfish, maybe a couple of lingcods or two, and if we get really lucky, we might slide into one of these islands really close to the beach and look for halibut. Oh, that might be legal. Yeah. Oh, look at that one there, buddy. Good job, young man. Kid caught that? Yeah, that's his first ocean fish. Keep her fingers away from his mouth. First wink out of the day. They look happy like you like like you enjoyed it. He was going for the sand house. Smiley grab the fun again. There you go. Alright. Okay, we're going backwards, folks. Okay, I know, no kidding. Okay, here we go. It's called the lean side. Right, let's do this one. Oh, the little one called the Johnny Bass. Here we go, a nice chucklehead. Got that in the magic metal jig, just fishing it straight up and down. It's been really good fishing here. We're in between San Miguel and Santa Rosa, and uh, we're still fishing the same first spot in the morning. And every drop that I've gone down, I've caught a fish on the same jig, magic metal. 8 ounce jig, that's a nice chucklehead right there. Alright, let's take a little break from the action, go to the tackle box, and give you a good look at the gear we're using today aboard the Ranger 85. This week in the tackle box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing. You know, we're fishing shallow water rockfish, and the way I like to fish for these rockfish is to use either shrimp flies or bucktails. I don't like to go with straight hooks, because lots of times these fish will pick away at your bait, and they'll pull the bait off the hook and you won't have anything dangling in the water, just a bare hook and you won't catch any fish. So the way I like to fish bucktails, remember in California, you can only use two hooks. So that's the same with bucktails. You can only have two bucktails on. So what I like to do is tie a double dropper loop. I just take one on, slide it through the line, and then just make a regular dropper loop rig, which means you go around the line five times you take the bucktail and you go right through it. And you can just let the bucktail fall. And you can use either half ounce or one ounce bucktails, depending on what you like. And then you always wet the line, just because of friction between the monofilament. And it comes together nice and tight like that. Then you take a second one. And you want to space them far enough apart so if you catch nice sized rockfish, one fish doesn't block both of your bucktails. 
And I like this color too. I like a glow in the dark when I'm fishing deep like this. Put that there. Again, go five times. And then just slide that bucktail right through the loop. Let it fall through there. And then just cinch it down. And again, wet the lines. Cinch it down. And realistically, I'd probably have about another four inches apart there. But for here on camera, I just wanted to show you the simple design. It works really good. The bucktails can move around. And like I said, if uh, fish comes by and he picks off the piece of squid or the anchovy you have pinned on here, you're still going to catch a fish because that's going to be moving around in the current and those rock fish are going to see that and they're still going to bite it. They'll get excited. Another nice thing about bucktails is they kind of pulsate in the water in the current and they'll move around and that'll attract fish too. Very simple technique, works really good. I've been doing this for many, many years. Catch a lot of fish fishing this way. Now, if I just want to target one big rockfish, then I move up to like a six ounce bucktail, maybe put a plastic uh, grub on there, a single tail grub or a sluggo type thing. That works good too. And I like to put on like a little strip of fish or a whole squid. That works out really nice. Just bounce that off the bottom, works good on lings. Lots of the salmon group or all those other kind of redfish really like that kind of bigger bait. But when you fish this, you're targeting just one big fish. And when you're fishing this way, you're trying to get your limit of rockfish. Works out really good. All right, well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see what you look like. Back in the same spot, just second drop, and I got another fish. And I got the smallest ling of the day. Doesn't even look like a ling cud. Like ling cud, smaller. Yeah, baby, baby ling cud. That's how aggressive these lings are. Even a tiny ling cud like that will go after a big jig like this. This is a eight ounce magic metal jig. Just working on the bottom and did exactly what I wanted to do. Just that's the infant size of what I want to catch. All right, let's see what these other guys are doing. There's a chucklehead right here. Nice fish. Is that called a chucklehead? Yeah, this is a chucklehead, better known as a copper rockfish. What's your number, sir? Nice fish. Good job. Hey, good morning, everybody. Captain Dustin here on the Ranger 85. We're sitting here. Uh, just on the west side of Santa Rosa Island, just out of an area called Bee Rock. Catching a little bit of rock fish for the people this morning. Getting a good shot. Some lean cod, bigger reds, some copper rock fish. Right now we're drifting over a little bit of fish here on the meter. A couple fish here and there. We've got the sonar working over here, sweeping out away from the boat, making sure we don't mess anything up. But overall, we have nice weather today and uh, fishing's actually not too bad. This one is short. Too short. Yeah, this one's short. We'll let him go. Let's double the start the morning here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. At least they're getting closer to legal. Yeah. Another lean cut, just a little too short. You can see how they're going after this magic metal. It's a different color for me for fishing for lean cut, but it's working really good. There you go. There you go. Hold that puppy nice up. Fish for uh, dad and dad's boats. We're on the Ranger 85. Kind of fish? Vermilion rockfish. Vermilion rockfish. Got yeah. more juggle in. This one's it. Oh no, he dropped it. There's a double. A double that's sand. Oh, yeah, it's not. I haven't caught one like this in a while. Yeah, it's probably like a four inch. Call it rockfish. Different species. Call it Johnny Bags. 
I got I got lines all over the place too. Hold on. Under, 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 under. Okay. Couple shots. Smile for the camera. Yeah. This is what fishing's fun with. Getting two on the line. Here's my 15th link card of the morning. <laughs> California. I want to talk to you a little bit about fishing an iron jig for this type of fishing, bottom fishing. And see the gear I'm using, not a very big reel. And I have Spectra line on here. I have an 80 pound Spectra with a small piece of 40 pound monofilament, not even fluorocarbon, the straight monofilament. And then this is the jig I'm using. This is an eight ounce magic metal jig. And what's great about these jigs is not only the, the way they perform, but on these ones, we have them all with welded rings. So if we catch a monster ling cod, or even if we you know, get like a black sea bass or anything, we don't have to worry about a split ring breaking open. That welded ring is gonna hold. We use these a lot for tuna fishing because you never know what size fish you're gonna get. And they work great. Right now, we're gonna look for a ling cod or a nice size rockfish. So the technique for this is you just drop it down. You don't have to cast it. Let it go all the way to the bottom. And I like fishing Spectra for this because you can feel everything. And I just have that short piece of monofilament uh, just so that if I do snag a rock or something, it's gonna break at the monofilament. I don't wanna lose all this Spectra. It costs a lot more money. But you could tie straight onto the Spectra, but there's a good chance if you hook a rock, you're never gonna get it out. You're gonna have to cut the line off. So that's why we have that monofilament on there. I'm just gonna let it go all the way to the bottom. And with the Spectra, you're just gonna feel every little bump when it hits anything down there, when it hits the rocks. And we're not in that deep of water. We're only about 250 feet of water. So I'm on the bottom now. And what I like to do, just shake it once or twice like this. When I get to the bottom, don't feel anything. And what I do is let it go all the way to the bottom. And then put in gear, crank it like four or five times, then stop. What I want my jig to do is dart up, look like it's escaping from the link cod, and then lots of times they'll chase it. So don't get bit, just put it back in free spool, and just repeat that process over and over till you get bit. So far, it's got to be something. Oh, uh, maybe it's a double. Oh, not double. Beautiful. Uh, right. Nice one. Throw the other one back. Right? I just got bit. There we go, there's a fish. Now I'm just slow bouncing it. Feels like a ling. Don't know if it's legal, but hit it pretty good as it was just sitting there bouncing the jig around. So at this point, you just make those first couple of fast cranks to set the hook. You don't have to jerk the rod or anything. And then just keep grinding. Once you got that fish off the rocks, you can kind of relax a little bit and wind it up. And just move the line from side to side so it doesn't fall up on your reel. And let's see what we got. Oh no, a big salmon grouper. 
Nice sized salmon grouper, good eating fish. And see how big this jig is? That's an eight ounce jig. You would think that's a monster jig, but compared to a big quality fish like this, it's not. That's a good sized fish there. Okay, we'll put this one in the sack, drop it back down, and see if we can get a link cut. Well, let's take a little break from the action here aboard the Ranger 85 and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious rockfish we're catching today out here between Santa Rosa and San Miguel Island. This week in the galley, we're back at Eat Street with Kate here in Anaheim, California, and she's going to cook up a delicious dish for us. And what do you have in store today, Kate? It's traditional fish, as in fish and chips, like British style. So we teach you the quick way to make it happen. Cool. You're going to make a dredge, and then you're going to make a beer batter. So the dredge is two cups all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of pepper. Toss this really quickly, and then the beer batter is going to be two cups of all-purpose also. Take a fizzy light beer, pour it in there. Put a whole beer in there. Three tablespoons of paprika. Two tablespoons salt. Stir this up. Kind of like a pancake batter consistency. You want it to be thick. Take each piece of fish, put it in the flour, salt, pepper mixture, and then through the batter. You want to help me? Sure. And the paprika is why the beer batter looks red? Yes. When your deep fryer's at 375, you're going to take all your pieces of rockfish and put them in at once, then into your fryer. Your rockfish are going to take about four minutes, but it's all about looks. Looks like fried chicken. 10 times better than that. <laughs> You're gonna cook it for about four minutes. After four minutes, pull it out, shake it around, make sure nothing sticks. And you're ready to go, nice and crispy. Put it in the malt vinegar, traditional style. That's so good. Good. <laughs> it's a beautiful, simple dish to do. The beer batter. We showed different beer batters in the past, but I've never seen a red beer batter. And it's that... very simple. I mean, at the end of the day, there's only about five ingredients. Mm -hmm. With the right fish, it's great. Anybody can do this at home. Yes. I bet you this would be great with squid, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's very good. Do you catch those? Yes, we do. Oh, man. <laughs> They're lots of fun. We use them for bait Next lots time. of times, but lots of times we catch them, we eat them, too. That's really good. It's a great dish. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome. Thanks, Dan. Remember, it's Eat Street in Anaheim. Thanks again for helping us out. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Vermilion rockfish, sometimes called red rockfish or red snapper, is one of the prized rockfish in Southern California. They live in a wide range as far south as Baja, California, Mexico, and north to Vancouver Island in Canada. They can be found in rocky bottom depths from 100 to 500 feet deep. They'll eat just about anything, including squids, shrimps, and other fishes. Nice yeah. On the iron. Little All right. He's fishing that magic metal jig straight up and down. He got slammed. Thought I'd try a different part of the boat, came back to the stern this time. See what this one is. I think it's a lane tie. It hit it really hard. But we'll see right now. Okay. That looks like a nice we'll one. We'll the other side of one more time before we go. Oh, that was a oh. Here we go. There's a legal lane. There's a jig we've been using all morning. Magic metal. This one kind of snagged him down below, came down, looked at it. Nice fish there. Just got another bait on the bottom, another mackerel. Just got some, oh, nice sheephead right here. Big sheephead. 
Nice sheephead. Lincoln! I got a shot of it. There you go. Legal link cod. Yeah, this is, we're trying to get it on the macro. Got a couple of Probably got 15, 16 link cods on the jig. Got a couple legals there. And then here's a nice legal right here. I'll make out my limit for the day. Two nice link cods. That's nice. And you see what he ate? He ate a whole macro. Just fishing it down on the bottom. That's pretty cool. All right, well, we're going to take a little break from the action here aboard the Ranger 85. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Nice cap, man. Did you know that rockfish can live as long as 20 years, 80 years, or 120 years? Well, that's right. They can grow to be 120 years old. For this week's tip of the week, the big tip was using spectra line. When you're rock fishing like this, it's really important you use spectra line. With that spectra, you can feel every little bite, fishing down 200 feet, 300 feet like we were all day today. It's very, very important to have that spectra line. Every little nibble, anytime you hit a rock, if your jig got in a rock, you're able to shake it off really quick because you felt it quickly using that spectra compared to mono. Mono is just like a big rubber band. It stretches so much, and lots of times when you get bit or you snag something, you don't know until the boat's a long distance away. So this week's tip of the week, when you're rock fishing like this today, use Spectre Line. Well, I want to thank the crew, the Ranger 85, Dusty, all the guys. They all did a great job. I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.